Good morning from Chalok Ban Cow Bay. It's 7 a.m. What an amazing morning. I thought I'd come over this side of the bay because then you can get a better, better view of the actual beach itself from here and the surroundings. Rather than walking on the beach, you can't really see what's behind you. I've got a travel day ahead today, leaving the islands back to the mainland. It's a sad day, I've absolutely loved time in the islands. So I thought it'd be a bit good time while I'm still here on my last day to do a comparison of which I think is the best island for me. This is opinion based. It's not for you. Everybody's got their own opinions. I've said this all the time. So constructive comments are more than welcome. If you're just going to come back with comments with, oh, I can't believe you don't like that, this is much better than that, then that's not constructive, that's, that's, not, that's your opinion. Everybody's different, Nobody, no two people are the same. Everyone's different things, out of different things that they want to do, different places, it's one of them. So please let me know what you think. If you've been following my, my adventures all the way, if you haven't been to these places but you have been watching me go on them, let me know what you think, let me know what would suit you better, which island you like. Right, I've got a list, hence the glasses, of 10 things that I want to go through for each island. And at the end, I'll let you know which I think is the best island for me. And I'm going to go by the roads, the size, the categories, the road size, how busy they were, access to beaches, nightlife, the prices, accommodation, the way of life, access to the islands, markets, and that's 10. <laughs> right, I'll kick off in order of where I visited. Ko Chang, that was a few months ago, Ko Chang. I was taking consideration that all of these places I visited, I went when it was low season, because I think that's the best time to visit the islands. It's the cheapest time, it's not as busy, and for me, that, that, that's great. If you want to come in to all the parties and all the bars are all full and uh, uh, everybody's here and the, the islands are awake and alight with entertainment and then come in high season but your prices are reflecting that. So it all depends what you want out of your holiday. I'm nearly 50, you know. So if somebody's watching this and they're nearly 20, they've got a totally different uh, plan to what I want to do. And I'm a long time traveler where if you're just coming on holiday, you've got money to burn in your pocket and you just want to go wild. So yeah, it's, it, everyone's got a different opinion. Right, Ko Chang, the roads, or the road, should I say. Ko Chang goes around in like a horseshoe because of the mount, because all, of the, all the islands are mountainous, but the way they're constructed, it goes from uh, all the way around, like I say, in a horseshoe. So you, you've got no, you've got, no problem with the roads there, navigating them. You haven't got as many side tracks as you have in other places, such as Koh Samui and Phuket. Uh, the, the roads themselves, good condition, and no problem whatsoever. The size of Koh Chang, it's the third largest island in Thailand. And you, you never really got a feel of that, how big it was, because of the road was so easy access. It was so easy to find your way around. Okay, if you were in the north of the island, you had to come right back down the south to come back up on yourself. But you knew that. That wasn't a surprise. Uh, how busy it was, Ko Chang. Very quiet, very quiet. Um, low season, that's why I picked it at that time. I can imagine in high season, it will be extremely busy. But uh, yeah, it, it, it was great. It wasn't, wasn't very busy at all. It was probably the quietest. Uh, compared to the size of all the islands and that that's because it's at the other side of the Thailand Koh Samui, Koh Panyang, um, Koh Tao they're always going to be busier because they're all grouped together where you've got Koh Chang if anybody's going down that side of the country that's the only place they're going to go uh, where we are access to beaches Koh Chang really easy uh, there was no problem You've only got really your beaches on the west on the west side, so yeah, there was no problem getting access to the beaches all the way up the west side. 
nightlife, very quiet Ko Chang. Um, it, you didn't really get any nightclubs, anything like that, it was just bars, and there was plenty of bars in each of the locations, each of the towns, the villages, loads of bars, but that, that was it. There was, there, was, there was no nightclubs or anything like that. Prices, low season. Kochang, very cheap, very, very cheap. The cheapest I've found, the cheapest of all the islands. Um, yeah, uh, for the third largest island, and for it being out of the way in Thailand, I think the prices reflect that. And yeah, it was very, very cheap in low season. Accommodation again, very cheap, very cheap, easy access. You can get accommodation all over the island, whether it be west or on the east. If you want it to be quieter or you want to be in the busy part. Access to the island was great. You had ferries going backwards and forwards all day, um, crossing, crossing paths with each other, really cheap as well. I think it was 120 baht one way for the uh, for the access, and you got loads of tour companies that would take you anywhere you wanted to go whether it be in Trat or any any of the cities. I got one for, uh, back from Bangkok. I got I got one two there from Pattaya. And then when, when I left Ko Chang, I left by a tour to Bangkok. So it was really easy. Markets, there was only really one night market in Ko Chang. Uh, it, it was one little strip and it was about 15 restaurants and stalls. But uh, that, that was it really. But you had loads of shops, you had loads of shops that sold everything and um, I think that really, that's why you never got so many markets and there was only one road, so you wouldn't get more than one market and that was in the busiest place in White Sands. And now moving on to Koh Samui. Koh Samui, the roads, the roads were good, uh, apart from when you got off the main road those, those again you, you had the one road going all the way around the island and this was going all the way around not just like it, it is in Koh Panyang or Koh Chang where the road stops at a certain place and you've got to come back on yourself it went all the way around but then when you had your little side tracks going off towards the beach and playing down the knee of the beach them roads were pretty bad if you watched me tour of Koh Samui the island tour Oh, it was hard. It was not not easy when you got off the map, off that main road. But the main road was great itself. I think there was three sets of traffic lights on the whole island, and uh, they were they were flashing on orange most of the time, so you could just ride drive through, drive through them. I think I stopped at traffic lights in Koh Samui in a week, about three times. So yeah, it was really easy to get about. Again though, in high season, it's going to be a different ball game. And if you're in a car. And if you're in a car, you, you, you've got issues because it was very busy at times with the car. With a scooter, you're just driving on by, so it wasn't a problem. The size of Koh Samui, the second largest island in Thailand. But it was easy access, it didn't feel like that because you could drive right around the island. So it didn't feel as if it was as big as what it actually was. I've gone backwards here, haven't I? Phuket was the next one. <laughs> I'll come back to Phuket. <laughs> Sorry Phuket. Access to the beaches on Koh Samui. Uh, where were we at? Uh, a lot of the places you were going to resorts, there was a lot more going on on the beaches, on the beaches themselves, than what you have with uh, Koh Chang and Phuket, where you, you've got to cross a road to get actually get to the beach from the, the, the bars, from the restaurants and everything like that. On Koh Samui, the, the, they were right there on the beach. You had loads of resorts, you had, you had everything there, what you needed. It, it, was, uh, it, was, it was easy if you went through a resort to Koh Samui. Nightlife, where it's Koh Samui. It, if you went to Chuang, that's where all the, the main nightlife was. Lamai, it's still very, very, very built up, but no, no nightclubs or anything like that. So I can imagine everyone, people staying in Lamai, all the young people, would be going to Chowang on a night. But on a daytime, much more relaxed, not as built up. You got more of that island feel than you did in Chowang, I thought. But saying that, Samui was a big island feel anyway. 
accommodation oh sorry the prices prices on course for moving weren't so bad i always say with the islands the bigger they are the cheaper things are and then when you go down and go down and go down where things are a lot more limited then you're going to be paying for it if your conveniences aren't there there's not much competition if they know that you pay out of the power price or you don't get it then i always say that where there's more competition you you inevitably you're going to get lower prices way of life or oh, accommodation sorry <laughs> i missed them all out accommodation there was a lot a lot in some movie i had no problems whatsoever anywhere uh, much like phuket and ko chang you, you can get accommodation at a reasonable price anywhere and it was good it was good again in high season accommodation won't be as cheap but it'll still be readily available access to the island to samui really easy really easy you get boats going all the time from the other, all from all the other islands all from the mainland very regular just like ko chang they're not backwards in getting people about to and from the island the markets the markets in Koh Samui were all right. They were all right, they weren't great. Um, the ones in Chuang, the night markets were very disappointing. Uh, the Mai was okay, not too bad. But it weren't like you were on the mainland, or it wasn't like Phuket. Uh, it was uh, very, very small, very small markets. Uh, stuck with the prices, wasn't much a lot of choice. Um, they built for the tourists. There was one morning market that was brilliant in Lamai. I absolutely loved it there. And that's because that was centered more towards the, the Thais and the tourists. So you were getting the authentic uh, food, you were getting the more authentic prices. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed that morning market, but I always say that about the morning markets. They're, they're all, all centered more around the Thais and the tourists, all the night markets, they're all usually tourist things. Right, let's flip back to Phuket <laughs> that should have been second roads in Phuket great there was no problem with the vast majority I, I can't remember having any real problems in Phuket speed bumps that was the only thing that was a bit of an issue speed bumps were everywhere but they are on all the islands to be honest with you size it's big it's a big island Phuket it takes a lot of covering uh, yeah obviously you need a scooter you don't know the islands to be honest um, but it, it, it's a big big island Phuket there's a lot to see there's a lot to do and the, the night the nightclubs there's everything you could want Patong it's, it's a, it reminds me of a lot of Pattaya it's a big big place with a lot going on and the last time I was there was 2006 and the different 17 years later it's like chalk and cheese absolutely a million miles of difference nowhere near each other where are we at now busy how busy was Phuket it wasn't overly busy but you could still feel a lot more people there than the other islands a lot lot more people uh, obviously it's the busiest island in Thailand, probably the most visited place, other than Bangkok and probably Pattaya. Access to beaches. They were all on the other side of the road, but very easy access. I mean, there was no problem. There was no resorts to go through. Uh, everything was pretty much easy in uh, Pattaya, Phuket. I've got Pattaya in my head now for some reason. Yeah. The, but they were always on the other side of the road so there was never anything actually on the beach and the, the, the stalls that were on the beach that rented out the umbrellas and the, the deck chairs and things like that they were extortionate they were four times the price if you walked two streets back the, at least four times the price everything you got on the beach is inevitably a fortune nightlife, crazy yeah, Phuket, Phuket absolutely mad uh, Patong, insane and then when you go to the smaller places it'll obviously go down I never spent a lot of time in Phuket town 
but again that was a big big place and that that seemed more for uh, for the expats and for people the thai people so i've never really seen anything of any nightclubs or anything there but there was plenty of bars and what have you but Patong, that's the place where you want to be for the nightlife prices in phuket it depends all depends on where you went it it's the same as a lot of the islands if you're going to go where all the tourists are you're going to pay the tourist prices but you can find your places like the morning markets um if you went off the street if you went off the back streets uh, sorry if you went up to the back streets you find prices exactly the same as well anywhere else in thailand 50 60 baht meals vietnamese little vietnamese restaurants uh, all sorts there was loads and loads of choice around Phuket if you were just savvy if you just stayed away from the tourist here a couple of streets and you just bought off the beach accommodation again readily available it's Phuket it's the largest island uh, you, you, could, you could go where you want it to be quiet you could go where you want it to be busy right in the thick of the action or it was very easy to just go somewhere where it's much quieter like Kata if you never wanted it to be so busy then if you did want it to be so busy then Patong again is wild it's it, it is a real big party place Patong a way of life it, it, it never really gave me that island feel Phuket uh, like I said before it, it felt like Pattaya in a lot of ways when I was in Patong but then when you got out of Patong you did get that island feel I mean don't get me wrong I, I love Phuket it was a lovely place to visit but could I live there? I don't think so access to the island it's the same as all of them really very easy access and you've got the bridge you've got the bridge in Phuket that's why a lot of people don't call it an island that's why it hasn't got co in front of it island because it, it, it's joined by a bridge so whether you want to go by boat or by road it's not a problem you can get there like I say the ties don't mess about and getting you on and off the islands markets the markets were quite expensive in Phuket and again that they were centered towards the uh, the tourists on the night markets I never really found any local markets or any morning markets any good ones um, so yeah that was a bit of an issue it was it was very much tourist based Phuket Right, moving on. Where are we going now? Koh Panyang. Koh Panyang. Very much smaller than Samui. And all the other islands, Samui, Koh Chang, Phuket. Koh Panyang, the roads were... Do all right. Do all right. I mean, you had to come... Because of the mountains, if you went to one place, you'd have to come right back down. Uh, to where you started and then go back up again and that was that was a bit that was a bit of an issue because it took time and there was quite a lot of side tracks so i got lost easy and i couldn't see the navigation on my phone <laughs> so that was a bit of an issue but it, you could definitely feel it was that much smaller a lot smaller than um, than the other three islands Ko Chang, Phuket and Komos, Koh Samui so you could get about a lot easier but the roads themselves were fine uh, if you had, if you were on a scooter, I never really had any problems at all. Access to beaches, Koh Panyang. Trying to think of all these off the top of my head while I'm going through them. <laughs> yeah, it was it was easy access to the beaches. Uh, you, you could go down on your scooter, and you would need a scooter to get about to all the different beaches. But yeah, it wasn't a problem. You could get onto the beaches pretty easy in Koh Panyang, and there was a lot going on on the beaches, so. Yeah, it wasn't as much as a problem as some of them. Nightlife. I never really seen much nightlife in Koh Panyang, really. Um, it, 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 there was loads of bars. There was plenty of bars. So you never had a problem there. But yeah, it was good. It, it, you had some... No nightclubs. No nothing like that. So... It, yeah, it was alright. It was alright, it wasn't too bad. You could tell it was a lot smaller. Yeah, that, that, that was highly evident. So, but you, you, then you've got the parties. 
you've got the full moon party, the half moon party, the no moon party, they don't need an excuse to party, they had light, uh, lighthouse parties, jungle parties, it was very much a big party place, but I'm nearly 50, so I've never seen much of that. But if you're looking for nightlife wild parties, the end of the month, that's usually the thing, that's when you get the full moon parties and what have you. Prices, prices, you, you were smaller, again, than what you were at, uh, where am I at? Yeah, as you went down from Corsa Movie, Cor Phuket, uh, Phuket the, the prices weren't too bad. You got the Koh Panyang, and I thought the prices were a lot different. And there was a lot more jewel pricing. And what I mean by that is, if you find somewhere that doesn't have prices on the selling, it's like, say, fruit stalls, food stalls. Now, for me, that is very much, if they don't have a price on, you're getting a different price from what the ties are paying. So it's a tourist price. There's no other reason for them not putting prices on everything. And I, I've seen that. I, I witnessed it. I, I, I had it myself. I've seen ties getting charged different prices. And I, I, I was getting charged more, or they were trying to charge me more. I just refused to pay it. I wouldn't do it. I dodged all them things because I think I don't I don't agree with that at all. I mean, think if you're in your, your home country and you're dual pricing other people coming from other countries, would that be fair? You know, it, it, it's not. I mean, give people the tourist places and everything like that, and if they want to pay them prices, fair enough. And put put the prices on things, let people know what they're paying. Yeah, dual, dual pricing. If there's not prices on anything, I've said this many times on my vlogs, then you're getting paid different, you're getting charged a different price to everyone else. Way of life, very, very, oh, the accommodation, sorry, the accommodation in Koh Panyang. I found it good, I found it cheap. Uh, again, it's low season, in high season, or at the end of the month when the parties are on, it'll be a totally different picture. But it was cheap. The two places that I stayed with, the green mango, uh, it was really lovely, it was lovely. It was about £11 a night, $13. And it was just outside, 25 minutes outside the, the town centre. So yeah, it, it was really, really nice. I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed Koh Panyang. And the, the, the second place that I stayed, uh, the Bang, Bang Bao, was it? Uh, that was the best internet I've ever had in Asia. And it was eight pound, uh, £9 a night. Nine pound, eleven dollars. You know, it's very, 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 very cheap. It was quite noisy because you were right in the middle, of the, uh, right next to a few bars that were quite noisy. And I can imagine it on a weekend it would have been pretty harsh. But yeah, what I found it was it was good. It was good in uh, Koh Panyang. And David, who I met, the German lad who I met in the Green Mango, lovely guy. That made so much of a difference when you've got someone like that living next door to you. Every time I spoke to him, we had some good conversations. He he made me feel good, you know. He was a, a very energetic guy, he loved his Muay Thai. Yeah, very nice, positive guy. Nice one, David, if you're watching this. Lovely to meet you, mate. Access to the island, the same as all of them. You've got boats coming from all directions, from Koh Tao, or from Koh Samui, or from Phuket, or straight, straight from the mainland. You can get easy access to Koh Panyang, no problem. The markets, there wasn't any really, that were, in my opinion, for locals. There was the night market I went to, the Sunday night market, and uh, they had them so-called hippies, with men in pyjamas with girls' clothes on, and they were, they were very, very uh, judgmental, extremely judgmental. When I was going around with my camera, I'm extremely respectful to everybody, and they didn't care. Then what? And then they showed their uh, their discontent very, very proudly. You know, they weren't bothered. Men and women, normally kicking about in the fifties. So yeah, uh, that's not the hippies. The hippies are no, and not judgmental. Let everybody just go on with life. Just crack on. You know, not judgmental at all. Just be happy. You know. These weren't the proper hippies, these were just ridiculous fools, absolute fools. This is my island. What are you doing with technology? 
yeah, it was pathetic really. I, I couldn't live on Koh Panyang for that. that. That's the only reason, because it, it, you just don't need that type of thing. And there's lots of them. There's lots of them in Koh Panyang. It's not, um, it's nothing like I've ever, ever experienced in that, ever, any other island or any part of Thailand. I've never, ever, ever experienced being felt to be felt to be felt uncomfortable like I did in Koh Panyang by a lot, a lot of people. And you should be ashamed of yourselves about that because that is ridiculous. It really is. You call yourself hippies, you're not. You're judgmental fools. Access to the island, yeah. Markets, done that. Moving on to Koh Tao. Here, this beautiful little place. By far the smallest of all the islands. Um, it, it, you can feel that straight away. You can feel that as soon as you get on the island. You get a scooter. I filled it up. I filled my scooter up with fuel. I've been all over the place, and I've still got well much more. more I, I've only gone down two bars, I think. And I've been all over the island. <laughs> I, I can't get rid of the fuel. And when I got it, it never had much in the tank. Now it's nearly full. So yeah, I was trying to get a boat and do as much as I could yesterday and use up the fuel. But it's not possible. It caught out with really small, but it's amazingly beautiful. It really is beautiful. And the people are lovely. The accommodation is more expensive. The Wi-Fi is a struggle. I've never had that in any of the other islands as much as what I have in Koh Tao. And I know people will say, well, it's a small island, but it's not really an excuse. You can use a lot, there's a lot of companies like AIS. I think I've found them the best. I always ask the hotels which one, which Wi-Fi they use. Or you can see by the passwords when you're booking into the, when you're logging into the Wi-Fi. I always ask them and then I can give advice to the other places where I go to. Because that one in uh, the one in Koh Panyang was absolutely awesome. It was 300 megabit uh, download and upload. I've never known anything like that. I got so much work done there so quickly, and it was a relief actually. Because after then, I come to Koh uh, Tao, and I've been able to get nothing done. The, the downloads have been all right, but the uploads, getting anything onto YouTube, it was impossible. I'm having to go back to the mainland so I can get a couple of days so when I can really get everything sorted out and get everything uploaded onto YouTube otherwise I was going to run out of time I've got to stay four, four or five days ahead of the channel because you don't know what the weather's going to be like you don't know if I'm going to fall ill if you're doing daily vlogs you've got this constant problem if you, you could lose days anything could go wrong one of your equipment could break there's loads of things that could go wrong so you've got to stay four or five days ahead and then you've got that little bit of backup while I'm in Koh Tao, I'm losing that four or five days. Uh, so I've got to get back to the mainland, or I've got to get back to a good connection so I can really catch up with my work. And it's going to take me a long time, like at least a couple of days to do that. So yeah, as beautiful as Koh Tao is, for work purposes, it wasn't as easy as the other islands. Uh, where are we at now? The busy. It's been quiet it's been quiet there's a few people about but you can imagine what it'd be like in high season and you've got a lot of divers over here so there's, there is still quite a few people about and hence why the accommodation might not be as cheap because you've always got a steady flow of people here again in high season i can see it being insane i can see the prices of the hotels being really high just because of what i'm paying now the difference in what i'm paying now to what i was, or was on the other islands I'm paying about 50% more. So yeah, it, uh, it, it's definitely a lot more than the other islands. You, you can feel it. Access to the beaches. Now, Koh Tao uh, can be a bit of an issue. I've heard about this on, the, on other places. But every, you, you, you've got to go through down bays and everything, whatever, to, to get to the beaches. And then you've got people, Thai people, who are blocking the bears off with signs and they're blocking off all over. Nearly every beach, you've got to pay like 100 baht to go on the beach. And the beaches are owned by the king. They're not owned by these Thai people. They're, 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 they're just there because they know they can get easy money off the tourists. 
it's rather pay me or you're not going on the beach which is shocking it's absolutely shocking because they shouldn't be able to do that and then they say things like oh well if you pay you have a pay 100 baht to go on the beach or you can pay uh, 50 baht to go on the beach or you can hire a, a snorkel for 100 baht and get on the beach for free you know, I thought, what? Are you for real? I'll go and buy a snorkel for 50 baht from the shop and not pay you anything. Just just go on the beach because it's not your beach. Uh, yeah, if you want to go anywhere like Shark Beach or anything, any beach, any of them. There's only this one, and you know, maybe two others that I haven't been trying to be charged for. So yeah, it's, uh, this just ties some Thai people illegally i think charging people to get on get onto the beaches i've shifted location we're at sarah Suri beach the camera got too hot me wittering on for too long and i thought i'd change location while it was cooling down right so i'll nip through this and get down to the what you want to hear what's been my best island but we'll finish off the court now the night I've done the access to beaches hard, hard if you don't want to pay cash, unless you go to Surrey and uh, a couple of others. The one I've just been to, Chalok, Chalok, Bow Cow Bear. Prior nightlife, very quiet, very quiet again. Go to Surrey or Mayrid, May Mayhad. They're your busiest, two busiest places. If you're looking for any sort of nightlife, nightlife on the island, they're the two places where you want to be. Prices, very much more expensive in Kotao, probably 50% more, even in 7-Eleven, it's at least 50% more than a lot of other places on the mainland. I know it's a small island, I know that they've got to get the things shipped to the island, but at the same time it's 7-Eleven, they're a massive chain, that shouldn't be a problem. And it, it, you can find some restaurants where you'll pay 80 baht, 90 baht for something that's 50 or 60 baht in the mainland. But if you're coming anywhere near the busy places, you'd pay 150, 160 easy. Accommodation, again, it's the smallest island. Right now, you're paying about 50% more than the other on the, the other bigger islands. But in high season, that'd be a totally different ball game. It'd be very hard to find accommodation here, I would have thought, when it's very high season, so you'd have to book well in advance. Way of life. I could, with it being the smallest island, I couldn't live on here for too long. I could come and visit for two weeks maximum, and that, that's it. It'd be two, same, same for me. But like everyone wants different things, I like exploring. Access to the island, very easy. You can come from Chumpton, uh, Chumpon, uh, from the mainland, or you can get access from any of the other islands to here, straight, direct. So yeah, you've got two big ferry services, Song Sum and Long Prior. The fast ferry or the smaller one, very easy access. Markets, I haven't found any. I haven't found any markets at all on Kotao. I haven't been able to find any on research, nothing. YouTube, Google, not a thing. But um, that's because of the size of the island. That's basically all it is. There's a little built up French market. That, uh, that's just extortionate really. Uh, access to the island markets, in conclusion, in conclusion, which is my best island? I look for everything and I research a lot on Google for reviews, whether it be accommodation, markets, where to go. I do a lot of research on, on both YouTube and Google. And I look for places that have got lots of reviews. So I, I don't go somewhere where it's just got two reviews, because they could be friends, you know? You can't beat real life experiences and that's what you'll find on Google reviews. My best island where I could I, I couldn't live on any of them to be honest because I like to say I like to explore but the one what appeals to me the most is Koh Chang it's out of the way to the other side of Thailand you're away from Koh Phi Phi, Koh Panyang uh, all, all the busiest islands that are grouped up together you know you've got so much going on here there's so much to do there's so many islands to visit this is so much more of a touristy area than yet Koh Chang definitely appeals to me the most it's a very very chilled out island I loved it there. I've said it in many, many vlogs. I love Koh Chang, and that doesn't take it away from any any other islands. I've done my time on all of them, but just Koh Chang was that little bit more suited me, suited my opinion for, for my opinion, for my lifestyle. That's where I enjoyed the most. 
all the other islands I couldn't really say I, I couldn't really say because like I said I've, I've enjoyed them all I've enjoyed every one of them I could holiday in any of them but uh, Ko Chang is definitely the top one for me uh, and that's for every category really ease of access accommodation way of life every, everything you've got everything you need there in Ko Chang or everything I need so let me know your opinions let me know what you think and like I say keep me constructive give me, give me something to reply to not you're mad this is better than that you know just explain why for you why it is for you you know these, these are all my opinion based well, I hope you found this interesting I hope you enjoyed the series hopping the islands I loved it I've absolutely loved it I'm gonna leave Port out today with a very heavy heart and I say that all the time but I am uh, I'm just telling the truth I'm just saying the way it is unfortunately I've got to leave here quick because of the Wi-Fi issues that's been my biggest problem on Kotal I am being able to get nothing done well yeah thanks again for watching I hope you enjoyed today as I've just said if you did please like subscribe and I hope you can join me in the next one when I'm back in the mainland or, or when I'm traveling back to the mainland which is today it's eight o'clock in the morning and I've got my ferry at quarter past ten. I'll get get back, get packed up, go and get my ticket. I haven't even got that yet. Take my bike back. There's a million places to see tickets, you've seen that, to buy tickets. If you watch uh, if you watch the, the other vlogs. And then get to the ferry, which is not gonna take long. It's caught out, you can get anywhere in 15 minutes. <laughs> Have a good day. Goodbye, Kotao.